tonight, the biggest loss of life in the channel for nearly three years. Twelve people have died, mostly women. Through the cold, the fear, the endless waiting and the battles with the police. They keep moving forward. Every step, every risk is a push towards a dream to survive the journey and reach a place where hope still exists. Do you speak little English? No. You, what, what language are you speaking? Kurdish. Kurdish? Kurdish, yeah. I am trying to find out what happened uh, last night with the boat accident. Can I pay you to uh, just say a few words if you know what happened, please? Oh, a different one. Kurdish Sorani, no Kermash. Oh, okay. I don't know. You don't know? No. Okay. Okay. The boat? Uh, yes. Uh, 12 people. Uh, 12 died. I don't know. You yes, don't know? Last night, yes, uh, last night in here. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Were there loads of women and children as well, or was it mostly men, do you think? 99.8% uh, male. Yeah, fighting age males. I'm telling you, a lot of what you've been reading online is fake. Speaking little English. Me, I'm making a video. Can I ask you some question for my video? It's okay. Video okay. It's okay. It's okay to uh, interview. Irani. You speak uh, Arabic. Arabic, Arabic. Okay, okay, one moment. Shahr. One year. One year. One year. Okay. England. Okay. 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 Um, love you, uh, you, you, you love you you love you love the guys invited me to eat lunch with them unaware that this place would soon become my home food 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 this person was going to travel but was broken by the sea uh, can you tell me the story of how you got injured please خرجت خرجت مع مهرب وثم صعدت على تلة خوفا من البوليس أو من الشرطة وسقطت من فوق تلة وأصبت في ظهري حتى أجى البوليس أن نقدني وذهبت إلى المستشفى وهذا حالتي. Do you have a wife, a mother, or a sister, and why did they not come with you? I was under the impression that the UK was being invaded by single fighting age men. A fighting age males. It seems for many that this isn't the case. Yeah, I am a young man, okay? I can uh, uh, coming by using this road. But the women, the small uh, boy, this is uh, difficult, this hard. When you get to England, you send them money to, to come, basically? Uh, no. No. شلون لم الشمل؟ الحكومة تحضر لي. الحكومة تحضر لي زوجتي وأولادي وأمي. Which government? أي حكومة؟ British. Yeah, British. Yeah, Britain. Okay. Maybe yes, maybe no. Okay. I don't know. What do you think will happen when you get to England? أكيد راحة يقاب آه سوري بس قلت أكيد بلد الحقوق والإنسانية Do you want to learn about British culture and integrate into society؟ هل 
تريد التعرف على الثقافة البريطانية والاندماج في المجتمع. يا 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 العمل بلد الحضارة الثقافة الفنون الأمن والأمان والإنسانية والحرية As this spoke about Britain, it felt rehearsed, the same phrases, the same hopes. It made me wonder, where was this image of the UK coming from? Was someone feeding them this dream? Integrating refugees into labor markets. The last question I would like to ask you, a lot of people would class you as an economic migrant uh, because you could claim uh, asylum in France. Uh, what would you uh, say to these people? France or all the countries in Europe, not only Britain. It's not a human rights for the أنا في أوروبا أكثر من 12 عام وليس لدي حقوق وليس لدي أي شيء والدليل على كلامي أنا وأصدقائي والناس تذهب إلى بريطانيا هي الإنسانية هي الحقوق الإنسان الذي يقولون فيه الأوروبيين ما عدا بريطانيا هي توجد في فقط في بريطانيا وهذا كل شيء بريطانيا ماما أمريكا ماما أمريكا مصر احتلال بريطاني ونحن لا نحب غير بريطانيا لأنها لغة إنجليزية وأنهم شعب جيد نحن بريطانيا هي أم أمريكا هي أم أوروبا لهذا السبب يوجد اللغة بتاعتها هي سيدة العالم لولا المملكة المتحدة لا نريد أي شيء غير المملكة المتحدة يوكي فقط So this man he said if he cannot get to the UK he's finished he'd rather he'd rather not live yeah. If if he cannot make it to yeah, the UK, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No UK finished. No, no, no UK. He said his life's finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No UK finished. No problem. No problem. No, no UK. No, no love. I love you. Okay. Ciao. أنا هنا منذ عشر أعوام. لكن أود أن أقول شيء في خاطري. ألمانيا ودا فرنسا ولا جميع الدول الأوروبية ما عدا بريطانيا هي لا تسوى شيء اكذوبة بإكذوبة لكن بريطانيا هي رقم واحد والبقية زيرو نول باللغة الألمانية نول رقم واحد بريطانيا وها هذا الكم الهائل من الناس يذهبون إلى بريطانيا لأنها إنسانية وأنها ديمقراطية, ديمقراطية وبلد الأمان بلد الأمان وغير قابلة للعنصرية هنا يقولون ليس لدينا عنصرية وهم دين العنصرية أوكي ثانك يو ويلكم أو ون ون مو أوكي والدليل على كلامي أن أنا كشفت القناع عن وجهي لهذا أن عرفت أن هذه المقابلة تعود إلى بريطانيا وشكرا لكم Shukran. If it was up to me, I would welcome you in my country. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man, that's fucking raw, bro. That CCTV is facing down the road at them, consistently watching them all day long. So that was my showering experience. It's quite dehumanising, especially when like cars are going past. You can't really wash your balls or nothing. Oh. So this is the centre where they give out uh, tents. And I've got to wait half an hour to get a tent. It's like this military hospital looking building with uh, with rotary turnstiles, like as if you was going to work. And apparently it will open in half an hour. So I'm just going to wait, but I can't get a uh, court filming because obviously then they will illegitimize my claims of being an asylum seeker. 
Got a place to sleep tonight. My dear mother, I don't know where to start. When I fled our home, so this this was your village, yeah? Yeah. Nothing prepared me for the journey. When I close my eyes at night, I see all the things that I miss back home. I've been here for five months now, but I am already tired of this life. This place is not fit for humans. Okay, so it's 9 p.m. now, and I just got a little instinct feeling to go back to the other camp, what I seen uh, earlier today, earlier this morning. I feel like they're still here. Imagine it, I can't picture it, people living in bushes for how long? This is people's lives. Now, if this ain't the saddest thing I ever seen, there's a, a teddy bear. So, that's what I'm saying to you. A young kid who was in this tent, living in the forest. And I am terrified. I can't imagine what a young child was feeling. Physically, water leaking in my tent, man. So searching right now, man. And the fact that this is what these guys have to live with every So you know it's forbidden to stay here. So you have to go away. You can take your tents if you want. Okay. You understand? So, let's go. Okay. We're going to take everything you want, but if you don't take, we have to take it. Okay? Uh, you, you working for the police, yeah? Uh, can I ask you, so how, how often do you do this? Like, is that every day? Why are you asking that? Oh, I'm a foreign journalist. You're a foreign journalist? Why? Yeah. What are you doing here? Uh, reporting on what's going on here. The mistreatment of migrants. That. You know that you're not allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to ju be a journalist. To take pictures and videos. Oh, okay. I'm not allowed to do that. Yeah, do you have your card? Uh, I don't I, I can't access a card right now. You know that they can take you with them because you don't have any journalist card. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you, that's why you're not allowed to do that. Okay. Yeah. So so you won't answer my question how often you do no, this I'm then? Not, I'm not, uh, I will not answer you if you are. I, I will not answer you. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask you why you won't answer? No. Okay. Mercy. You are not my boss. Okay, so you only do stuff when you get paid to do it, then, right? Yeah, as yeah. you can. As you can. Okay. I'm here for translation. Okay, and you don't feel like this is immoral because these people have nowhere to go? Yeah, I know. It's not legal to stay anywhere, so they'll just constantly keep moving us on. So I'm not sure where we'll go tonight. So. Okay, moving, yeah? So we're being moved on now. 
like I said, I don't know where we will go because there's nowhere we can go. And if this was my life, all the time, every day, I couldn't deal with it, man. So this is day two. The food's actually the food's actually edible today. Yesterday, I would say it's not fit for human consumption. I mean, if you weren't filming, the tent would have been torn apart. I mean, the tent would be ripped. Cut, blah, blah, blah. Cut the tent. Yeah, this cold. It hit two of my friends with sticks. What the fuck? Are you serious? Uh, so the guy is telling me that the police uh, broke his leg. Damn. Yeah. Whoa. That's bad. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah. No. No. So a lot of these guys that have injuries, so making the journey, getting on the boats is even more difficult than if you had your legs, had your able body, you know. الحكومة المصرية ضربتني وحصلت عنده ظروف فذهبت إلى ليبيا بحثا عن بريطانيا وعندما ذهبت إلى إيطاليا حاولت أن أذهب إلى فرنسا فحاولت كثيرا وعندما ذهبت إلى فرنسا أحاول الوصول إلى اليوكي هذا في سبع سنين yeah. okay. so he put the Egyptian government hit him and I had some circumstances, so I went to Libya looking for Britain. When I went to Italy, I tried to go to France. I tried a lot. When I went to France trying to reach England in seven years. Seven years, seven years. total. Uh, yeah. So he's yeah. been trying to get to England for seven years from Egypt. الآن لا يوجد عندي أي شيء ورجل مكسورة بها كسر لا يمكنني العيش أصلا لا أحب أوروبا لا أحب فرنسا لا أحب ألمانيا لا أحب سويسرا نو نو لاف لاف يوكي نو نو يوكي فينيش أموت أحسن اوكي سو هي بوت فايف اتمس فايف اتمس تو جو فروم ليبيا تو إيطالي فايف اتمس and with each attempt, I pay back what is behind me and what is ahead of it. Until my private cars were sold, even my house was sold, so he sold all his possessions to try to get to Britain. Now I have nothing and my leg is broken. This is broken, I cannot live at all. So I just met Ben, he's, uh, he's not a local, but he's half French, half British, uh, that's what his passport says. So I'm just going to ask him a few questions about how you feel about the, the current migrant situation. Coming from uh, Britain, um, at the minute we've got a lot of protests, like the, the media labels it far right protests and the media is constantly pushing this narrative that migrants are coming into the country and causing crime so racism is on the rise in Britain you said you're, you're uh, from Sweet, uh, Switzerland? Well I live in Switzerland You yeah. live in Switzerland yeah. so what is the narrative in Switzerland? Well I think it's pretty much the same in, in let's put it like this Western Europe no? Yeah I think um, people don't really understand I mean I've I've worked in, back in 2014, I worked in Lebanon. Uh, there was uh, obviously the war in Syria. 
and Lebanon was witnessing a, uh, a massive influx of its population, more or less 20% of uh, rise population rise coming from from Syria. Yeah. Uh, and I thought to myself, well, listen, <laughs> if no one's going to do anything about this, these people are going to come to Europe, which is, I mean, everyone, I, I have not. Th- these guys it. are actually Syrian refugees. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm yeah. once again, I, I'm not of these people who, I mean, I, I definitely think we should all share the burden. And uh, I mean, so, but I thought to myself, if no one's going to do anything about this, it's going to happen what's going to happen and yeah. you see what happened in 2015 2016 uh, and w- what we what we're doing our governments are doing are just putting pushing people to their deaths really yeah i mean you you uh, i mean you can't see here because there's no barbed wire but look and i, I worked here in calais in 2008 doing yeah. the same thing you are okay. uh, living with these guys yeah. so uh, i mean i kind of know this <laughs> so you experience now. more than I've, me i wouldn't say i'm experienced i'm just I'm interested to see how this place has changed and how it's changed is it's just been fenced up. Huh? Okay, yeah. So and, all this uh, used to be open. All this used to be open. People used to sleep in tents. But I mean, these boulders there, for example, I saw, I mean, you probably saw that. Yeah, on, so uh, to stop more tents to, to being... To st- stop people putting their tents there. Next and, to and each other, you can other, see yeah. them all through the city. And, uh, well, over there, well, the, the whole place is completely blocked. Yeah. So... In effect, what this architecture is doing is put it, pushing people to their deaths. Yeah, it's yeah? archaic. And so what, uh, what happened yesterday is pretty much uh, a consequence of this border. So w- what I personally think is that I'm we... I'm just going to uh, close, close my tent. <laughs> Stop myself getting salt in, man. Yep, you bet. Sorry to interrupt so, you. So, so, so what I was saying is that... Uh, I mean, this is I, once again. I'm not for for this in any any way, but it's not working. So yeah. it's about bloody time that our governments should uh, should appreciate that it's not working, and there's, yeah. so there, there's something else that has to be done, really. And uh, um, yeah, that's <laughs> right now my opinion. Fa- uh, thank you, Ben. And I yeah. I definitely I definitely agree with what he's saying. As I said earlier, with the police moving us on. Just felt like a pointless exercise. You, yeah. you know, you've got the you got the porta potties there. You got the food distribution down there. Yeah. We have to stay here. There's nowhere else mm. to physically go if we're reliant upon these services. So the police moving us on. It just felt like an exercise in showing the power, like like a you, you know making these guys' life more difficult. It just felt like a pointless exercise, to be honest. And yeah. like I said, coming from Britain, mm. I feel like listening to the narrative what was going on in britain like my own opinion was not uh, fully uh, conclusive but now that i've been here and witnessed it firsthand i definitely uh, feel that there should just be safe passages for people to come to these countries like these guys wouldn't be granted visas if they tried the legal route so what options left what made you uh, want to come illegally why did you not apply for a visa or something visa because uh, europe and england not give visa for uh, Syrian nationality. And the fact that there's one particular guy here who's broken legs. Like, how is he getting on a small boat to get to England, man? Mm-hmm. No, it's true. It's true. I mean, but once again, it's um, it's just yeah. You mentioned this pointless exercise of arresting people for for nothing. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of pleas for one guy. The migrants just been put into the back of an unmarked police car. And what's going to happen is that. They're going to be uh, freed in two days because they can't keep them uh, more than two days. Yeah. And uh, it's just going to be the, the endless uh, story again and again. And that's what I saw in 2007, 2008. And I think it's just, yeah, it's just about time that we we should just realise that, yeah, we have to, uh, as you said, make safe routes for people to come over. Uh, and just, uh, if you, if you you look at it in a very cynical way. Uh, the, peop- the money these guys spend uh, to arrive from from their country to Europe. Yeah, uh, one guy, one guy, ten thousand euros. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we're just giving money to uh, to criminal Gangs, organizations yeah, yeah. Out this way, and uh, and when you see the price of this fence, uh, the price of the, the police border. I mean, and I, once again, I'm I, I'm not someone who thinks like this, but if I, I would have to put myself in their position and thinking money-wise, 
uh, it's just <laughs> it's just a total loss of money, really. So, uh, come on, guys. Despite over £60 million invested in border control in 2021, the number of crossings continued to rise. But instead of rethinking the approach, the UK has now committed nearly half a billion pounds over the next three years. So we want to we wanna make some coffee. So now, now we're, we're just looking for something uh, metal uh, to try and make some coffee. He's found, he's found a can, but he's suggesting we knock someone's house and... Uh, just ask for something metal. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> okay, so we just asked one Frenchman, and he said no. So we got we got to uh, got to keep trying. Oh, merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Voilà. Thank you. Voilà. Merci. So we so we got the pot. You just have to rely on the kindness of strangers out here. <laughs> Good, nice, nice man, nice man. Happy, happy. Good, oh la la. That was so much morale. So much morale. Oh my god. Making that coffee and having them oats. I feel brand new man, I feel brand new, thank god for this saucepan. Oh. They said I cannot come with them to the boat because I'll be putting their lives at risk. They told me to go to Dunkirk, apparently uh, 10 boat crossings go there on average each day. Um, the guys just put on Google Translate uh, and I'll, I'll read this out to you. There are many Mafia people that I know and they know me and my friends. We're afraid. If I enter or speak in their name or speak about them, they will kill me immediately. It's wet. It's wet. The condensation. So I'm gonna need to go to the middle. Because I was sleeping at the edge. And now I'm wet. Everything's wet. Okay, so the police are down the road so these guys think that they're, they're, they're waiting for backup and they're packing up all their stuff really quickly <laughs> Oh, one more bro, one more bro, yeah. 
go. Okay. Thank you. Like I said, just the, the daily humiliation of it all. And these guys are so terrified of, you know, the police repercussions. You, you've seen how panicked and how quickly they're dismantling their camp. And like I said yesterday, if I wasn't here filming, the police might slash the tent, cut the tent. You don't know. I'm not sure where we were being taken. I hoped it'd be better than the camps. The journey seemed to go on forever. I dazed in and out of sleep, briefly stopping to watch videos of their friends reaching the UK on Facebook. That was when it hit me. Most of the rumours these guys hear about the UK is from social media. While my For You page is filled with travelling content, theirs is filled with propaganda. Habibi, come to UK. Habibi, come to London. Habibi, come to UK. Marketing the UK is a paradise, a land of honey, but who's funding this? In such uncertainty, I was grateful for a familiar face. That night, I'd be sharing a room with two strangers, but also with Mohammed, who had previously met in the camps and who's been traveling for many months to reach the UK. I am coming from uh, Syria, okay? Okay. Uh, then I travel to uh, Libya. Then you travel to Libya? Libya, from Libya by uh, sea uh, to Italy. Despite most of the refugees here being Muslim, the first meal was sausage and potatoes, which they couldn't finish. Nevertheless, we were grateful. So literally in the hallway they have posters um, reminding you of the risks involved in crossing the channel to England. That's mad. I've, uh, I've stayed in the, the military before for a year. And this building is exactly like a military building, like very institutional, very like soulless, archaic architecture. It just felt a bit like a prison camp in the fact that it's in the middle of nowhere and they locked the doors at 10 o'clock. Which 
the thought of that is a little bit daunting to be honest like being locked in somewhere in the middle of nowhere I mean I get there's probably an added risk element of if this place was open past 10, 10 o'clock like open all night then you know maybe there would be some behavior that could cause this place to get shut down but I don't know just imagine you've gone through all this you've You've, you've came from like the, the jungle camps, the, the tents, living in the forest, hiding, all that stuff and then you come here and it's it's kind of like a, a detention centre. A lot of people have been asking me um, questions as well because obviously I've told the, I told the refugees that I'm, I'm British and um, a lot of them are asking me questions like why are you here and uh, also asking me questions and advice for like when they get to England so I'm happy in that respect that I can offer some knowledge and offer some advice and give a little reality check to some of these people who think that England's the land of honey I've told them that it's not that good but no to, to rephrase that I've told them that it it won't be as easy as some of these people think that there are other alternatives to the UK. I just think some of these have, have got the mindset on it so much that it's the UK or Norway. Psychologically, cannot take this anymore. I really do. Come, um, we will see it. Maybe we will film it. Thank you. Psychologically, this is warfare, man. And then I'm gonna go to sleep in the gym. I can't hack it. A dirty little tramp, one of these f***ing migrants in this room just spat in the toilet floor, man. Maybe that's normal in their fucking country, but that ain't normal around here, man. That's disgusting, bro. This f***ing guy, I've come back to sleep in the bed, and now he's smoking the fags again, fucking chatting loud. He always got bad actors man, some people are good, some people are bad it was up to me this guy and welcome I could not handle another night in that place so I ran off the next morning towards the smuggling beaches hey, you, you, you also get the boat today? not today, tomorrow in my, uh, tomorrow in uh, morning okay maybe four, five not balloon? balloon or balloon? They took us to the refugee centre far, far, far. Yeah. Uh, me, I go uh, four. Four days? Yeah. I go and back. I go and back. Four times? Four. Wow. Police, no good. No. No good. 
ticket. Oh. Train ticket. Uh, how do you buy online? Train ticket. No train ticket. I'll buy it online. Yeah. Show me. Show me. Let's. Okay. Let me buy it online. Yeah. Okay. But go back and uh, you go when you have a ticket. Allez. Okay. No problem. Is there a machine anywhere? No machine in here. Okay. You need to go in a big train station in Calais. Allez, go. Okay. Not very friendly, man. I feel like the, the system's a bit subtle because the train ticket costs 33 euros. And none of, the, none of these guys have that kind of money, especially when they're spending their life savings to get on the, the boat. I think it might just be a cultural thing, but all these guys just listen to TikTok on full blast. Just like all the French people around is pissed off man that is pissing me off so I'm on the beach now and I don't know if I'm too early or what I don't see anything irregular I don't see any shapes or figures hallucinating a little bit to be honest but like these guys are so paranoid of police detection that how am I? Little G with the camera gonna find him, man. After our faith, after our faith. The guy said between 4 or 5 am. I just have to keep a intent lookout for, uh, for people and hope they don't see me first. an hour it's about to leave and I just saw someone on the other side of the beach walking around with a flashlight so you no know, it just seems like pretty unusual behavior at this time of the morning it's quarter past five now I've just found a a fuel tank. Man, I might have missed it, man. I don't see. Allah, we will we we return to to Bologna. Yesterday, I think I think some people died in the sea. Too much bullets there. We must wait. Okay, so I'm in Wimru. Uh, is that how you say it? Wim Wimru. Yes, Wimru. Wimru, <laughs> uh, another popular destination for the the boats, the small boat. I'm just chatting with a local now, and I'm going to ask him some questions about what he's seen in the local area. So, do you want to introduce yourself, brother? Hello, my name is Hector, and I'm 15 years old. Okay, Hector. So, um, what have you seen in relation to the, the boats crossing? Like, what have you seen uh, living around here? Uh, sometimes I can see like tries of crossing, so I can see like 80, 70 people that car are carrying a boat and trying to go to England. Uh, we can see them. We see a lot of policemen near the, yeah, near the sea and all the day, every day there is a new events that are coming. Like have you noticed any problems in the surrounding area due to, due to this? Yeah, there can be problems like sometimes they can, uh, they can be dead when they are trying because they don't, know, they don't all know how to swim. And also with the policeman and the pressure on the ones that are living here, it can be really, it can be a, a bad, uh, a, they can have bad events between the policemen. Yeah. 
Okay. It's not always good. Okay, and how, how do the police like treat these people, do you know? Really badly. I, I also saw them uh, near the sea that are taking people and we don't know where they are going. I think in camp, but I, we don't know if after they are going in their countries or we don't know what can happen and the policeman can be really angry and can be really bad for them, bad situation. Wow, so a boat like picks them up and takes them somewhere and you don't yeah. know where. Or even just when they are walking on the city, they can be stopped by the police and take to camp. But we don't know the, the following of the story. Wow, okay. So um, in terms of like the, the help and support around here for, for migrants, is there anything that is like supporting them? Yeah, there are some um, associations that can that help them, uh, like for clothes if they are cold and um, to rescue them if there's a problem. Because we also have problems just here in the sea and we can help them because the policemen can't. Yeah. So we are helping them to get out of the water and after some association can take them for the night or for food and help them uh, for their lives. Okay. And why do you think, rather than uh, like staying in France and claiming asylum in France, why do you think they want to go to Britain? Yeah, I personally, I don't think that it's always the best solution because uh, they are sure that if they are going to England, they are going to be ill and they are going to have a job and start a new life. But it's not always the case because sometimes when they arrive in England, they are stopped and it's not always going as they want. Yeah. But the, in France, it's very really difficult to start a new life. Okay. But in England, it's probably easier, but not always. Okay. But they think so. Yeah. So, so you think like, uh, if someone's like moving here, it's hard to like integrate into society. It's hard to be part of like a community or something. Yeah, it's really complicated because they need paper. And after like to find a job and everything, it's really, really difficult in France. Yeah. I think we can, this is what we can improve yeah. to help them to start a new life and give money to their children or uh, their family to live and go out of war or difficult country. Okay. And the, the last question, brother, if you could change anything about the situation, what would you do? It's really difficult, but for me, I will help them. I, I'm not, if it was only me, I won't stop them from crossing and go to England. But at the same time, if they are trying to cross and there is an accident and they died, it can be also really difficult for the ones that don't stop them. But to help them to start a new life here and in England or in other countries, okay. to integrate them. Okay, thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate that, brother. One hundred percent. A large group of people was here very, very recently, and they've probably made the the crossing in the past few days. This is the reminiscence of a camp just on uh, the Dunes Beach in Wimmeroo. I'm just coming into the dunes now. The spots where, like the guy said, they bury the bolts around here and uh, they come back from it late at night so around here there could literally be a little uh, little dinghy boat buried what's that then i mean i might find something for myself to sleep on to be honest oh yeah another another reminiscence of something some people used to to stay here I found a sleeping bag, but whether it's fit fit for use tonight is is another question. I, I don't really know. If I can hang it up somewhere to dry, I'll be all right. But this is madness, man. You you imagine how recent this is? Like like fresh bread, fresh bread. This was one or two days ago. I am literally in the belly of the beast. Like this is eye opening. It's like when you start to get closer and closer the thing you set out to discover, you're like, whoa, I'm getting there. I just found uh, an ID card. Um, 
and a train ticket from Brussels. So Samira was in Brussels and she uh, she didn't like Brussels, so now she's going to the UK. So I wonder what was wrong with Brussels, why well, she'd prefer to come to the UK. This place is quite eerie to be honest, like it's a graveyard of people's possessions and people I have literally died like very close to here. So yeah. The human traffickers, if they see me lurking around, you know, they see my face, start to start to question who's this guy, what's this guy doing in a patch? You don't know where they're watching from, you you don't know where like it's like these guys are training like guerrilla warfare, like stashing bolts in little corners of sand dunes. I suppose you have to be though. Like these guys don't get paid unless these guys get to England. Speaking with some of the guys in, in their camps, they said all the money goes into a holding account and it's only released when these guys are uh, confirmed that they've got to England. So that's a little bit of information that's essential to know. Children's nappies. When I heard in the news about the the children that died, one of them being a four-year-old Syrian girl, quite detached from the reality of uh, the reality and severity of the situation. But when you see stuff like that, it, it kind of hits home. To be honest, the one thing I also hope this highlights is that yeah, a lot of these most of these people will be granted asylum and they do have a lot of benefits handed to them by the system by the british government but these people literally leave everything that they have on beaches like this around france and they come here with just a, a few clothes and their life jacket on their back after asking about 10 people including one angry frenchman who i asked for help he went like this i said to him if you ever need help, I hope no one gives you the same response. After falling in the water, so my, my shoes are now soaked, my, my jeans are now soaked. One guy give me a lighter. <laughs> I'm so happy, man. I'm so happy, man. Oh, man. I'm going to set, set a fire in the dunes, uh, dry out my shoes, cook some uh, porridge on the, <laughs> on the fire. Oh, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. my settings I went from the prospect of surviving to now I'm thriving man <laughs> all thanks to that guy giving me the lighter what a G man what a G sorry mum if you're watching this no it's not very responsible but sacrifices must be made for the greater good <laughs> good night and uh, I'm gonna set the alarm for 3am maybe 3.30 and then go to that spot, find a vantage point and uh, hope for the best. As I perched on top of the sand dunes, I noticed the fire in the distance. What happened next has left me scarred. Just pacing back and forth like a madman. I think he's waiting for the other smugglers to drop off a van full of people and then he moves. Scumbag. And he's turned off his light source, so I can't even film it. But I think you would have seen it on the, the first recording. I just got spotted. And now I've run. I can still see them. They can probably see me. Fucking hell. I trust my instincts, and my instincts are saying, move, move, move. It's a try and lay low. I laid low. And then boom, fucking, my heart said uh, to get out of there. 
Oh my god. That was so scary, bruv. Yeah, I think I need to keep moving still. God, I got all shit in my hair, bruv. Just go to the beach, innit? Just get ready. At the beach is probably safer than fucking these dunes, fam. I was just thinking, fuck me, if he, if he lets off a shot or something, like these people have got guns, man. This ain't nothing to fuck around with. I wonder if I put them off. Drop, drop part of my fucking camera as well. Shit, man. Either I scared them off or the sea became too chaotic. The group decided against travel that night. Heartbreaking, man. Everyone I stayed with safely made it to the UK, apart from Mohammed, who's trapped in Calais due to the smuggling gangs mugging him, and this boy who went missing and hasn't been seen since. My view of illegal immigration will never be the same again. If I could just persuade one person with this story to redirect their frustration at our government and media rather than at the refugees, then I feel like the sacrifices and suffering I went through that week were worth it. If you'd like to support what I do and get early access to future documentaries, the Patreon link will be pinned in the comments. Click here for my previous documentary.